What's up guys, it's Mo and today I have another tutorial for you on creating something in Inkscape and using it with Cricut Design Space um, and creating stuff for your planner. Today we are going to be making our own little bows to make our own little bow washies, bow headers, bow whatever the heck you want to use these guys for. Um, most commonly I've seen, you know, obviously bow like washi in like an Aaron Condren or A5 wide is super popular right now. Um, and it has been for quite a while. I don't even just mean right now, but I want to share with you guys how you can make your own and then print, then cut it, print and cut, print, then cut with your Cricut Explore. I get so excited that I just sing when I'm going to do these tutorials for you guys. Okay. So, first things first i'm going to have a couple of videos for you guys this one is going to show you how to create like bottom washi headers and stuff with bows i'm going to do one uh, i think with stars i make might do like the stars and the confetti one in the same um video this one we're just going to do bows and then i'm going to go into eventually a video about foiling for you guys so you can use these this 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 i guess tactic what do you call a strategy tutorial, whatever. <laughs> I, I have lost all of my words recently to create uh, your own kind of, I guess, like graphics, if you want to say, to create your own uh, clear foiled overlays. A lot of, I do mostly a lot of like happy planner type of stuff. Um, but if you are in the Erin Condren kind of community, people do it in the happy planner community too. Um, and, uh, or maybe like A5 wide, you might have seen a lot of people use like clear foiled overlays. Um, Eventually, I'm going to show you how you can use this tutorial, this, the product, the end product here to create your own kind of foiled overlays. Um, but that is a future video. I just want to tell you guys what's coming up. I don't know when it's going to be, but that's what we got. So after all of that rambling, today we're making bows. Um, and the, again, another thing, the point of this is now if you make your own bow, then you have your own bow. You can do whatever you want with it. It's not like you have um, a clip art that you got offline. It's not, you know, you don't have to license it. It's your bow that you made. So, and plus it's fun to just make stuff, right? And plus, what if you don't like your bow ears to be as loopy as this? Maybe what if you want them squished, you know? So what we're going to do is we're going to open a new Inkscape uh, canvas here. And we're going to go over here to draw freehand lines. So we're going to click on that. We're going to, I don't know what the defaults is because I played with this a lot. Um, but we want to make sure that this create regular Bezier path is selected and the smoothness is increased. I would say something 50 and beyond. I have it at 76 here. Um, and I'll show you what that means. So the smoothness, as it says, when you, uh, uh, hover over it is how much smoothing or simplifying is applied to the line that you're drawing. So for example, I'm going to draw the left ear of a bow and we're not using a stylus. I literally am just using my mouse. I'm just using my mouse. So we're just going to go like this and that draws like a left ear kind of of a bow. And you could see while it was processing it, it was kind of green. It was kind of jagged. Um, if we take the smoothness down, it's not going to be as smooth as, um, as it could be if the smoothness was up, if that makes sense. So we can also see if we double click on this, we'll get the two little nodes. You can also click over here on edit paths by nodes. Um, and if we click on this one, it's got more nodes to deal with. Um, so it's not as smooth a line. It's not as um, easy to work with in our application that we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And what we can do is, I think this is a good ear. I mean, you can play around. Let's draw more. Why not? We can see, oops, I forgot to bring the smoothness back up here. Uh, well, I think we're at 78, but we can do this. So, you know, we got that one. We got this one. Like, whatever you want to do that you like. I think I'm going to go ahead and work with this one. I'll move these guys out of the way because maybe I want to play with them later, you know. Um, and then we're going to double click on it again to edit these nodes. We're just going to grab this and kind of bring that down. Let's, I'm going to hit my control key and I'm going to zoom in. And yeah, so we can do that. You can also, you can double click and like add a node. Let's see. I want to make it smoother. So yeah, let's see if you want to adjust this, you know, the way it looks, you can do that. Whoops, I don't know why I double clicked that. You know, okay, I think that this looks like the perfect little 
ear to a bow. And the other thing I want to say is these are not technically shapes that we're making. So when we edit the color, the size, the thickness of the bow guy, we are going to want to edit the stroke. So we'll go over here to fill and stroke. If this doesn't show up in your sort of toolbox over here, you can go to object, fill and stroke, and that will bring it up here. And we can just, you know, change the stroke on this to make it, you know, as thick as we like. Um, and we will change the stroke multiple times as we go through this video. So I like this ear. I think it looks great. Let's go ahead and make the um, right ear. What we're going to do is hit control D. That's going to make a copy. You can see that. And then we'll go over here and go flip horizontally. Then you can hold down the shift key and use your arrow keys to kind of nudge this guy over. And once he gets past him, you can use, you don't have to hold the shift key anymore. So now we've got, and just nudge it back over to the left. Now we've got both the left and the right bow going. We need to draw the little tails to the bow. So we'll go do the same thing, draw freehand lines, and we'll just kind of bloop a tail. I think that looks pretty cool. We can also make it bigger, stretch it out, rotate it, you know, whatever you think you need to do. Then we'll go back to stroke. I think it was six. Are these six? Yeah. We'll go back to stroke, make it a six. Maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger. I think it looks like a good bow. Now we need to make the right tail. Hit control D. Again, that makes two of them. We'll go to flip horizontally, hold down our shift key, nudge this guy over. And now we have our little bow, I guess, clip art, if you will. So we can uh, drag and select all of this and hit control G. We're going to group and ungroup and change the scale and change the stroke style and everything multiple times throughout this. Um, but grouping things together, it just keeps them together so you don't have to keep selecting the same thing every time. Uh, or each individual one, two, three, four, like quadrants of this bow all the time. It's all just selected together. So we're going to go ahead and work on some bottom washi. This is a measurement I have found. Um, I don't, I do not have a current Aaron Condren. The Aaron Condren I have is like from 2016, I think. So I don't even know if anything is going to fit, but this is a measurement that I have found that might work for you. You may have to measure your own. You can make it whatever size you want. Honestly, if you want to make like just big washi strips, go ahead and do it. So this, I made these um, fi about 15 millimeters tall. So that's what you get. Um, that's like the height of the washi. That's what you get when you read like a 10 millimeter washi or 15 millimeter washi. You can make them whatever size you want. We're going to stick with 15 millimeter for right now. So this longer piece of washi, so like the washi that would be for your right-hand page of your Aaron Condren or A5 wide or something, is 6.375 inches wide by 0.591 inches tall. This shorter side or shorter piece for the left side would be uh, about 4.76 inches wide 0.591 inches tall, and then this is uh, just like an extra piece like people make on their kits to fill it in, and it is one and a half inches wide by 0.591 inches tall. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these uh, washi strips and hit control D because that's going to make another copy, and we're just going to work with another copy of this. And then you'll notice something odd happen here when we scale this down. We can also like play like maybe you like it a little bit more squished. Maybe you want a little bit like this, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. But you're going to notice when we scale this down, it's going to, um, the, the line looks like it's going to thicken. I'm actually going to hit contr uh, control, shift control G and ungroup these. And I'm going to make this more like that. I think that looks better. Okay, so now I'm going to select everything and hit control G. We're going to, making sure your proportions are locked when you do this, you want to scale this bad boy down and we're going to bring him to the front and we're going to work on creating this bottom washi i guess this bottom washi strip this washi strip here on the bottom first so we can scale this guy down you're going to notice he's getting thicker but we can go over here we can hit shift control g ungroup it and change the stroke style maybe back to like a three 
hit control G and now it's uh, grouped together again. I'm going to align this in the center. If you don't see um, your align and distribute here in the, I, I think I used to call this the layers pane, but it's really not the layers pane. Um, in this little toolbox here, you can go to object, align and distribute, and that will bring this little toolbox up. So now we just position our bow the way, the place that we want it, and we're going to populate a line of uh, bows across this washi. I'm actually going to go back to fill and stroke, and I think I'm going to bring this down to two, maybe two and a half. I think two and a half is better. Okay, control G. So we can hit control D, which is going to duplicate these just a couple of times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why not? So now with one of the bows selected, you're going to hold down the shift key and select the background, this, this piece of washi here. We're going to go to align and distribute. I'm going to hit align right, and that just brings one of these over there. Then I'll use my arrow keys to kind of position this end one, end bow where I want him. I'm going to drag and select all of the bows, and I'm going to hit distribute horizontally. So that, that looks nice. Let's see. I'm going to hit control D one more time to make one more bow to see how that's going to work. Control D and oops, let's do control D one more time. I don't think I did it. Control D and we will do that. And now we have our sort of washi strip populated. What we can do is uh, select all of these bows again. I'm going to hit control G just for the sake of it and then hit control D which is going to duplicate it, D as in dog, and then we can nudge it up with our arrow keys. I'm going to align this in the center of this washi tape here. Then I'm going to hit control or shift control G to ungroup them, and I'm going to select these guys, group those, and align these to center here. So it's kind of going to be off from this bottom one, but it, I think it will look okay. So then now you have a whole bunch of, you know, or a, a whole bunch of bows. Now you have some bow washi that you can work with. Um, if you want to change the color of these, you're going to have to go to fill and stroke and change the stroke color, not the fill color. I'll show you what happens when you change the fill color. That's not what you want to do. You want to leave the fill color as null fill color. So go to stroke paint. We can select all of these if you want. Boop, boop, boop. Stroke paint. You know, whatever color that you want here. And then you can change your background washi color to, you want to use the fill because it is actually a shape to whatever color you want. And you can make it match different kits maybe that you have. You can make it, you know, whatever you want. You can even make this like, we can make this white, maybe, stroke paint, we'll make this white, you know, and then this can go down, oh, I think I hear the baby crying, um, then this maybe can be like a darker green, and now you have your own little bow washi. So it is much later, and I realized I forgot to share with you guys how the heck to get this out of Inkscape here and actually use it, and I like to try to do that um, in these videos. Um, I think I've done it a lot. I don't know. Honestly, I kind of assume because I have so many videos that you guys know, but I know that some of you don't. Most of you might not. So first thing, you want to make sure you go over to File and Save As. You want to save your work here as uh, something that you can come back to in case you want to change the colors, you want to use your bow again, you want to do something else. You want to make sure you're able to edit the, the file. So you can go to File, Save As, and then save it as an SVG. I have it saved as bow washi template, whatever. Anytime you make a change, just go save it. And let's say we want to, I don't know, change the color of this. I'm going to hit Control D. That'll make a duplicate. D is in dog. And then we'll go over here, select our green washi, and maybe we'll make the fill, I don't know, pink. So now we have pink washi, and you can just make however many washi tapes you want to make. Um, to export this, or to be able to use this in Cricut Design Space, we need to export this as a PNG. In my little toolbox area here, I have the export PNG kind of window open. Um, if you don't have that, you can go to File, Export PNG Image, and that'll bring it up. You want to make sure you have Selection highlighted here, and then click uh, Export As, and I'll go ahead and save it here to my Google Drive, and I'll save it as Green Washi. And then 
typing that in and hitting enter is has not saved it. You need to hit this export button here and that will export it so that you can upload it to Cricut Design Space. So now we go over to Design Space, open a new canvas, hit upload, uh, go to upload image, browse. You should be able to just find green washi, bring that up, complex, continue. We don't have to uh, touch anything up or clean anything up. Hit continue, save it as a print then cut image, hit save. Now you do want to make sure you remember the width here because you need to tell Cricut Design Space to um, make it that width. So 6.375 inches. If this ever changes to something else, then all you have to do is go back to inches. So 6.375 is how wide it is. So we'll go here, insert images. When it's selected, we'll go up to size, make sure your proportions are locked, and we'll just change that to 6.375 and hit enter, and that'll size it down. Then we can hit make it, and we can put as many as we want on our little, you know, maybe you make a couple different ones and export them. You could make a whole sticker sheet. Um, I think we can only fit six here. So then, yeah, I think if we go to seven, it's gonna bring it to the next page. Yeah, it'll bring it to the next page. So then you have a whole full sheet of washi and you can um, cut this out. And I ha also have a video on making like a um, sticker book kind of thing uh, using, once you print these like full sheet stickers, you can kind of punch them with your happy planner, planner punch and put them in a like a sticker book. I will link that video as well. So now we're really done with this video. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Um, let me know what else you want to see. I think I'm going to have some other videos, like I said, uh, kind of doing the same thing, washi tape, maybe making some overlays. We'll see what's up here. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to my next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.